There's a storm across the valley The clouds are rolling in The afternoon is heavy on your shoulders There's a truck out on the four lane A mile or more away The whining of his wheels just makes it colder. Welcome to Community Forum. My name is Priscilla Almquist Olson, your host. Today is December 15th, 2022. And today it gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome David Ames, who is uh, from the Ames family, which, who, which has contributed so much to our community. Uh, and David is going to talk about the Legacy Fund. Welcome, David. Thank you, Priscilla. I'm really pleased to be here and have a chance to talk a little bit about the Legacy Fund. And before you do that, um, tell me, a l I know that you live in Cambridge, uh, and you're not here living in Easton, but you have such a connection and participation in this community as if you lived here. Explain that. Well, you know, <coughs> Easton was always part of our, well, it's our family history. And uh, when I went away to uh, school and college, was in the service, you know, I'd always come back to Easton. And then after, after uh, I got married, we would come out to Easton for weekends, and uh, I uh, was always involved with the, I should say, I shouldn't say always, but I uh, became chairman, uh, president of the uh, Farthingham Memorial Corporation in uh, 1976. And uh, I was uh, active with that through, I'm still the chairman of the board today. Uh, so that's, uh, that's quite a long time. And uh, I've also been involved with the Historical Society. I'm the first vice president there. And um, more recently, uh, we've uh, gotten involved with the Legacy Fund. So that's my CV. <laughs> it certainly <coughs> is a, an impressive one. <coughs> so let us t tell us about the Legacy Fund. How did it get started uh, and your participation in it? Well, the, the Legacy Fund really, uh, I guess there the are <coughs> two aspects of that, why and how. I think that uh, after I retired, I, uh, I, I was thinking I'd really like to do something new for Easton. Uh, and uh, it was in my mind, I really had no particular sense of what that might be. Um, but. Um, a friend of my brother, Bill's, uh, talked to Bill about the Community Foundation of Southeastern Massachusetts, which was the predecessor to the South Coast Foundation. And uh, the Community Foundation uh, supports scholarships, donor advised funds, uh, committee advised funds, and uh, uh, does a lot to stimulate private giving uh, to support uh, nonprofit institutions, 501c3s. And, um, you know, I, I thought that was a great idea and talked to Bill about it, and we got Lee Williams involved, which was always a good idea <laughs> when it came to anything civic. And, uh, you know, we engaged a several other people, too, who were all very generous with their time. And for a long time, we thought we'd go down the road of encouraging uh, donor-advised funds, talking with people and getting them uh, to uh, think about, you know, supporting whatever their interest was with a, with a donor-advised funds. Um, but after a while, it became uh, clear that there would be some difficulties in structuring that. And uh, John Vasconcelos, who was the uh, president of the South Coast Foundation, 
which succeeded the Community Foundation of Southeastern Mass, suggested we look into a committee advised fund, and we did. And then um, after uh, we set that up, we spent a year or two getting organized, raising some money. And uh, then in uh, 2020, we gave our first uh, grant, which was $3,000 to the uh, uh, Oaks Ames Memorial Hall. And it's not a very large grant, but we try to make our grants strategic. And the uh, hall was uh, really working hard to develop the uh, second floor performance area, their stage. And a big issue for them was the uh, stage curtains, which were 50 years old and uh, in bad need of repair. So uh, the grant helped the uh, hall uh, purchase those curtains. And, uh, and I think it's been you know, part of a successful uh, rehabilitation of that, that space. Then um, the next year, we gave 3500 to the food pantry. And the food pantry had been renting a panel truck for their deliveries and pickups. And uh, they were paying uh, a monthly rent. With this money, they were able to, uh, well, with the help of this money, they were able to buy a new panel truck for themselves. And it's been a great thing for them, save them quite a lot of money. And then last year, we gave uh, Smith Farm uh, a $3,500 grant for a handicap access uh, ramp. They want to put in uh, their uh, programs for um, disabled, a lot of the programs focus on disabled people, particularly veterans. And they need the uh, ramp to uh, give them access to the indoor space. And that should be uh, up and running by uh, the fall of uh, next year. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to that. So <clears throat> you, you haven't been in existence for very long, and yet you've been able to raise substantial funds. Um, so h how can people who are listening today and viewing this program uh, make a contribution? How, how do they do that? I think the uh, easiest way is to, uh, to uh, go to our website, which is uh, eastonlegacyfund.org, and that's all one word, and click on the uh, donate page, mm -hmm. and it'll take you right to South Coast Foundation, and you can give online. Uh, if somebody uh, wants to, I, I write a check, that's certainly possible too. I'd recommend going to the uh, website for the address. It's, I know it's 128 Union Street, New Bedford, but I can't remember the uh, zip, zip code. code. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, so um, and how does it work? Uh, does the uh, foundation make contributions as well, or is it, is it just the, the funds that you raise from the legacy fund? that allows you to make these uh, donations? Well, the, the, uh, mm -hmm. the fund is an, an, an endowment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the purpose of the uh, uh, endowment is to uh, uh, sustain and enhance the uh, uh, quality of life and character of Easton. Mm -hmm. And we do that with those, uh, those annual grants. Mm -hmm. and so I assume when decisions are made, uh, they're made by uh, an executive board of the Legacy Fund? Yes, yes. We have a board of um, six advisors, and uh, we receive about typically seven applications uh, a year from local nonprofits. And, um, the South Coast people are great because they process those applications. It's a standard form, and the South Coast people uh, work with the applicants if they have any questions. And then if, when the applications are submitted, there's important information that's not there, they'll work with them to get the whole thing completed. And uh, 
typically in March or April, uh, late March, early April, we will make a decision. And we try to have everybody who's interested uh, come in and, well, not really come in, but we have a Zoom so that the uh, applicants can, you know, describe what their project is and give us a better sense of uh, mm -hmm. what they're going to do. Great. So, um, South Coast, do, does South Coast make recommendations at all to the executive board? No, I think <laughs> that's very important to know. Um, South Coast mm -hmm. really is uh, helping us. They, in addition to processing applications, they uh, manage our portfolio. Mm -hmm. And, um, but in terms of making the uh, determinations, um, we technically recommend the uh, uh, recipients to South Coast and they review it and they do have the right to uh, say uh, no and they would do that if the beneficiary was not a 501c3 company mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in entity. But it's, it's really it's that sort of thing mm -hmm. that would. So <clears throat> you've been pleased with their investment strategies? I think they've done as good a job as anybody. You know. I mean, you're a former investment banker, so you can make a commercial critical judgment. Banker, commercial banker. All right, commercial banker. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so they're able to generate enough funds so that you can uh, be able to give to a nonprofit this $3,500 grant every every year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. And and actually, you know, we try to. Uh, build that uh, endowment up as you would mm -hmm. expect so you know if uh, gifts are received some some are received that are uh, ded dedicated to that year's uh, gift mm -hmm. so we don't remove anything from the portfolio we just uh, give see. the money from the so people can um, donate and know that their money is going to go immediately perhaps to a worthwhile non for profit Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, um, uh, how often do you meet? Well, it, it would uh, depend on the time of year. Um, as we um, right, right now, uh, we meet probably every six weeks or so, and it's usually it's a Zoom, uh, mm. which is very convenient for me living in Cambridge. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, then, you know, during the uh, application uh, process and decision making, it's, uh, you know, we meet, uh, but that, that's spaced out. So it's still probably six weeks and so mm -hmm. forth. Then we, this year, had a wonderful reception at the uh, Smith uh, Farm location, which was uh, really great. And, uh, and uh, we have a, a few meetings. Uh, I heard that. all about that reception because my good friend Joan Lundgren was responsible for all the wonderful, exquisite food. Well, Joan did a spectacular job. <laughs> We'd like to have Joan back if we do that again next year. Yeah, yeah, and you know, she doesn't have, it's not a business, that she, but I've been telling her she ought to make it a business because she has exposed herself and her culinary talents <coughs> to so many people that she's getting requests, you know. So, but uh, she has a busy life, a bu busy civic life. She's on the board um, of the Eastern Shoveltown Cultural District. Um, she got me to join, and um, uh, she's active in in uh, many organizations. So, yeah, <coughs> yeah. she's really done her share of, of uh, community uh, uh, work. Uh, and so have you. Tell me what, I in the past, what have been some of the events uh, that led you to think about the Legacy Fund and that you've participated in? Can, can you think of things that, that caused you to say, you know, we need this fund? <coughs> um, well, y you know, it was sort of a eureka moment when, when we heard about the Community Foundation. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I just 
recognize that not-for-profits are so important to Easton and they make a tremendous difference to the quality of life we've got here. Now, of course, they're not the, the only factors. I mean, the churches are very important. The Lions Club with its multiple events is terrific. And then, you know, Borderlands is an asset and Stonehill makes everything available uh, to Easton residents. So they're all important, but you know, when you think about the not-for-profits, the beautification efforts of the Garden Club, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the civic facilities that are available from the uh, Oak Sands Memorial Hall mm -hmm. and the American Legion and, and really four or five other entities so that groups wanting to have a meeting for this or that purpose have available this uh, resource easily. Then, you know, culturally, you've got the library with the phenomenal programs at Quesset, and uh, the Historical Society is a great resource for local history, really remarkable. And, um, you know, the, you know, Governor Ames of the state for the trustees and, and, uh, and the NRT, you know, they're all that open land. So really, you know, you add it all up, and it's it's a big deal. It sure is a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> is, does the Legacy Fund permit you to make a grant to um, not-for-profits which are not in Easton? No. No. <clears throat> so it's just to benefit the community. Yes. Wonderful. And we certainly need that <clears throat> to continue the, um, all the organizations that you mentioned. Uh, s so that life continues here in Easton to be as vital and um, uh, important to all of us citizens, and especially to the children, too, growing up. Um, you know, there's a course in high school about um, that's elective um, about the history of Easton, and wow. uh, second graders go, all second graders go to the Historical Society and, and get a lecture about Easton's history and get to see some of the artifacts um, available uh, at the Historical Society in, at the depot. Yeah, so, uh, that's, that's so we're building <coughs> people um, for the future of Easton, and hopefully they will be contributors uh, not only in money but also uh, I with their talents and um, uh, with their talents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I think I think that's uh, that's great to yeah. have build that sense and because, you know, Easton really is a remarkable mm. place. I'm very biased, of course, but uh, well, you know, David, it, it's remarkable because of the legacy, pardon the pun, the legacy of your family, and what it started so many years ago. My grandfather, <coughs> my mother's father, got off the boat from Sweden in Boston, came to Easton and um, worked at the Shovel Works. Um, uh, and he was the contact person for people from his island, West Coast Island, uh, who, uh, Orist, who didn't have family or friends here. They had his name and they had his uh, address. They co landed in Boston, contacted him, and he got them a job. Where else? The shovel works. <laughs> he got them housing, which was probably the Ames housing. Uh, and he, Ed Hands uh, told me recently that he also started English classes for all the Swedes. Um, but the most interesting thing was, uh, and I'm so proud of it, he was on the first board of directors of the Easton Cooperative Bank, which has, is now the Bank of Easton. So if John, uh, Mr. Foley is listening, president, um, please take note of that. <laughs> so he was very civic-minded. He was very intelligent. His father was a judge in Sweden. And so he came equipped with civic responsibility, I think, when he came here. My mother carried on that tradition. You probably remember mm -hmm. she was on the historical commission for decades, and she helped at hands uh, write the Swedish portion of his book called Eastern Neighborhoods. Oh, wonderful book. Wonderful Which book. is out of print. Yeah, very sadly. I hope it will come back. Me too. I've, I've encouraged Ed to write a um, sequel 
um, to to the book. You know, yeah. What's yeah. what's been happening in the eastern neighborhoods uh, <coughs> since that book was published, and certainly the Legacy Fund will be part of that story. Great. So, so I want to thank you so much for coming today and sharing the story of the Legacy Fund, what it offers. And I encourage everyone who's viewing today to think about donate, donating. Uh, and every amount helps. It can be a little amount, it can be a lot. It depends on your resources and your desire to share your uh, resources with the nonprofits, which make your life so interesting and um, uh, cr create all kinds of possibilities for you and your family uh, in Eastern, the quality of life that you enjoy. So please consider donating. Go to the website, um, easternlegacyfund.org. And uh, David, thank you again. It's always a pleasure thank to have you. you. And thanks, thank you for your contribution uh, to Easton and your families. So appreciate it. Well, thank you very much, Priscilla. Really enjoyed being here. Great. And I hope that a uh, viewing audience has enjoyed this program as much as David and I have enjoyed presenting it to you. Uh, until next time, Priscilla Almquist Olson, be well.